Okay, time is now 6 p.m. I'm going to call this February regular board meeting to order. At this time, uh, junior high school principal Dr. Flatt, would you lead us in invocation, please? Yes, sir. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for every seat filled here tonight. For each mind and heart that fills this room, we thank you. Only you truly know what we are setting out to accomplish this evening. We have an idea, a vision, hints, and daily instructions. We have talents, abilities, and time to work. However, only you can see in perfect detail the end of every beginning, every project, every season, every life. Nothing is ever in vain, for even mistakes and missteps are used for good. Bless this meeting tonight, all those present, as well as the lives that our work here will affect long after this meeting adjourns. Help us make every moment count. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Dr. Flatt. At this time, uh, Hill City Elementary Principal, Ms. Jennifer Halco, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <coughs> Me in the pledge, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Halco. <laughs> Section 4, approval of the agenda. Dr. Webb, is there any amendments to the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I ask that the board add uh, inclement weather day as item 8F after approval of personnel interaction items. One amendment to the agenda under section 8, item F, inclement weather day. With that, I hear a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I make that motion. Motion by Ms. Youngblood to hear a second. Second. Second by Ms. Enos. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five and none opposed. Thank you. This time, Section 5, Student Recognition. So I'm going to call on uh, Junior High School Principal Dr. Chad Flatt for a student recognition, please. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Got it. No, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight we want to be uh, we want to recognize Jeremy Westbrook, who has won the state FFA um, AG or the quiz contest for state FFA. And Jeremy and his folks will come on up, as well as Mr. Dobson. And Mr. Dobson is going to help me out with this. We kind of go through. Um, last year, uh, before Jeremy came to us, Jeremy's a seventh grader with us. Mr. Baisden had told me about Jeremy, and he had said that um, this kid is great, he's nice, he's smart, he does everything, he wins all sorts of awards. And so I'm going to be able to tell Mr. Bates now that for once he is correct, because all those things, all those things have proven <laughs> true with Jeremy thus far this year. So that's one time Mr. Bates has been right. But in, uh, in October, Jeremy competed in the FFA Area Future Farmers of America quiz event. This event is a 50-question quiz covering all aspects of FFA, and Jeremy was in the top two of 48, sixth through ninth graders. He then advanced to the state contest, which was held at um, Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College. And while there, Jeremy competed against 11 more students who qualified out of 243 total from across the state. Of those 11, eight were ninth graders and three were eighth graders. At the end of the event, Jeremy was recognized as the state winner. It has also come to our attention that Jeremy, a seventh grader, is the youngest student on record to ever win the contest. If you will, give Jeremy a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Dr. Flack covered most of, most of what I wanted to say, but uh, I've been teaching uh, long enough to have had several students come through, and I've had some bright young men and women come through that I'm very proud of, but the dedication devotion and just the simple brain power of this young man is outstanding and I'd like to recognize him tonight. Uh, nothing against Chairman Green. I mean he was one of mine as well but uh, <laughs> so far it's right here this man tops it all so give him a round of applause.
Congratulations to Mr. Westbrook and his parents and Mr. Dobson for the great job you do. This time we're going to call on uh, Athletic Director Chris Parker for two presentations. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, those of you who know me know I'm a huge fan of any extracurricular activity. What a great night where we got FFA, band, uh, basketball, and esports all represented. Uh, I'm excited to be a part of it. Uh, all our different organizations do a great job, uh, do a lot of work nobody sees. So it is nice when we occasionally get to show people all the good things they're doing. Uh, our next thing is we're going to recognize Mackenzie Weaver. Uh, come on up, Mackenzie. I'm going to talk about you while you're up here. Um, she's a senior in high school. She can take it. Uh, Mackenzie has is, is done so many great things with our basketball program. Those of you that know in the history of athletics here at Pickens High School, girls basketball has been far and away the most successful sport. 27 times reached the playoffs, nine region championships, uh, dozens and dozens of good players that have gone on to um, score thousands of points or go to college and play. And You know, McKenzie is the second lead scorer all time. We've had thousands of girls play girls basketball here, and only one scored more points than McKenzie, and, and she's close to that one. So uh, against Lafayette about a month ago, McKenzie scored a 2,000th point, which is only the second time we've had that, or the third, I'm sorry. And also, last week was named Region Player of the Year. So of all the girls on all the teams in the region, she was selected as the Region Player of the Year. So uh, we want to give her a round of applause. We're going to bring up Mr. Wallace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Coach Thomas going to say a few words about it. Sorry. Just want to say, um, I get, I've known Mackenzie about, let's just call it a thousand days um, over the last three years of being a beer coach. And, uh, Coach Parker already pointed out a lot of the accomplishments uh, on the basketball court, but I just want to point out personality a little bit. Um, in, in the thousand days or so that, that I've been able to see her as a student and an athlete, I, I could count on my hand maybe how many how many days she hasn't been at her best with, her, with a positive attitude or just an upbeat spirit. And that just says a lot about who she is and, and a testament to her. Um, that's uplifting for her teammates that she comes in that way every day. And I could even count on less fingers than a half here the amount of days that she didn't work hard in those thousand days of, of practice. And I think it's shown on the course. So I want to compliment you for those things, not just for being able to reach certain milestones, but, but how you went about it. Um, there's a lot of teams that have players that are significantly good or skilled. Those teams don't always have great relationships. Um, it says something when McKenzie has good relationships with the teammates in that position. So, you're welcome. Thank you, Mackenzie. Congratulations again. Um, we're going to honor Mackenzie at our Athletics Honor Night, May 18th. Oh, Mackenzie, come up here and shake their hand. Hey, we might get Jeremy back up here too. Jeremy, come up here and shake their hand. Where's Jeremy? Is he <laughs> come on, Jeremy. Get up here and shake their hand. It really is exciting to see all these people on here today. Our next group to recognize is our esports team. And, um, you know, a couple of years ago, the JHSA offered esports as an official sport. We were in the first season of accepting that. And uh, Coach Will Nix uh, took that on and is really taking the ball and run with it. And esports is a challenging series of different games to play. In this particular league, we played something called Rocket League, which is kind of like soccer with cars. But there's a lot of teamwork the players have to talk. It's actually really interesting if you haven't been. And, um, you know, anytime you can say you're the best in the state at anything, that's pretty cool. And 
uh, as far as Georgia High School Association is concerned, who organize our sports programs, uh, this is only the second different group that we've had win the state championship girls basketball in the 70s as a team and in esports last year and this year. So a uh, pretty big accomplishment for these young men. We're going to call them up individually, and then we'll kind of talk about them all as a group. They defeated for Forsyth Central 4-1 to one at Mount Vernon uh, last week for the uh, state championship. Um, so let's call them out. Let me call your name. Come on out, Mr. Wallace. Come on, hand you Joey Freeman. Come on now, clap for him. Right here. <laughs> Hannah Benson. <laughs> Dalton Garner. <laughs> Colby James, who's not here, but we can clap for Colby in the Tristan Warren, Tristan Warren, Tristan. And, uh, Carter Logan, and Mason Watkins. Also, Coach Will Nix. It's phenomenal when you have a great group of kids, but also the fact that they're also great academically. They're going off to good schools, doing great things, and it's fun being around them. I couldn't do it without these guys. They came to me, I came to them, and we just found each other, and well, we're going to make it three this spring, so thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Thank you. Congratulations to all these highly accomplished students. This time, I'm going to turn it over to Pickens High School Band Director, Mr. Michael Lou, and Mr. Andrew Smith, Junior High School Band Director. Good evening, y'all. Every year, the Pickens High School Band has many students audition for the District Honor Band and for a chance at All-State Band. Uh, our state is divided into districts by the uh, Georgia Music Educators Association, and our district includes Forsyth, Cherokee, Pickens, Gilmer, Fannin, Dawson, Lumpkin, Towns, Union, and White Counties. Um, this year, uh, with District Honor Band results, uh, we had 14, uh, excuse me, we, from the first round auditions that we actually hosted, uh, we had 17 students make these bands. We only had 10 last year, so we we're very excited about that. Um, as I call their names, let's go and get them to come up and line up, straighten the line, and, um, and you don't have to march up here, you're good. Um, from the 11 12 band, we had Natalie Giddens, we had Rihanna McClendon, DJ Lee, Jared Davis, Nate Andrews, and Connor Williams. It's from the 11 12 Honor Band. the 9-10 honor band, we had Eli Galligan, Mary Forrester, and Owen Galligan. And from the clinic band, which is 9th through 12th grade combined, we had Piper Duncan, Levi Kuyper, Savannah Malden, Paige Klein, Seth Densmore, Will Gent, Luis Gonzalez, and David Gossett. Once you're selected for the band for the, uh, after the first round audition, if you, your score is high enough, you're advanced to the final round. Um, we had 10 advanced to the final round competition. I think we only had three or four last year. 
Um, over 915 students auditioned at our district level and over 2,200 auditioned at the all-state band level. Um, these 10 students, there's not a, not, not one for the, there's not a separate one for this, but these, uh, these people would, uh, just raise your hand, uh, these people advance to the final round. Eli Galligan, Connor Williams, Jared Davis, Piper Duncan, Mary Forrester, Owen Galligan, Rihanna McClendon, Natalie Giddens, Luis Gonzalez, and DJ Lee. Congratulations. And finally, we had one student selected for the All-State Band. Over, like I said, 2,200 <laughs> students auditioned for the All-State Band. Um, and one of ours was selected. He'll spend the first weekend of March in Athens, Georgia for the three-day event. The student selected is Eli Galligan, third chair horn in the state. <laughs> and we also have junior high. Okay, no. that's cool. Yeah. You want to slide again? Make, make two lines. Two lines. Two rows. Oh, you know who needs to be Julie or Julie? Slide closer. Closer, 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 closer. 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 Sorry. Are you good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, y'all. I have to pull the mic down a whole lot. <laughs> uh, hey, that's yours. That's all. Okay. Uh, the Pickens Senior High School band is full of. Check. It's usually my job. Is that what they said? Is there something? No? It's red light. I don't know what you. Check. Check. All right. Uh, the Pickens Junior High School band is full of high achieving, high, highly motivated, and uh, productive young, young citizens of Pickens County. My students are not only musically talented, but amongst the highest academically performing students in our school. I'm very proud of them. And I'm very excited to recognize several of them tonight for their outstanding achievements in music. District Honor Band requires a dedication that begins in sixth grade and is a culmination of years of hard work and months of preparation. Students get a prepared piece of music that they have to perform as well as scales and other um, requirements um, in, for, in front of judges. And, uh, um, and if they're chosen, they get to participate in a very enjoyable weekend um, full of hard work at uh, District Honor Band. Several of these students also went on to compete at the state level as well. These students are learning uh, very early what it means to dedicate themselves beyond what is just required and very proud of their hard work and commitment. This year we had 10 students audition at the district level and six of those students made. Those students are Carter Callahan on horn. Carter Vasco Sulti is six competing at state level. Ari Reinhardt on tuba. Parker Schultz on trombone. And then Charlie Gibbons on trumpet, who couldn't be with us tonight due to a soccer game. <laughs> Jerry Knight on clarinet, who is very sick tonight. He's not here. <laughs> James Kendrick on trumpet as well, and he couldn't be here tonight because he's also here. Congratulations to these students for their musical achievements. Thank you, Mr. Oum and Mr. Smith. Congratulations to all our outstanding musicians. Next recognition is 
for Hill City Elementary. Uh, I'm going to call on uh, Ms. Destiny Shook, Director of Public Relations and Community Engagement. Ms. Shook. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Webb, Mr. Young, and others in attendance this evening. Tonight I have the honor of recognizing Hill City Elementary School as one of Georgia's Title I Distinguished Schools for 2019-2020. The goal of the Georgia Department of Education Academic Achievement Programs is to reward successful schools and school districts for significant progress in improving student achievement and or making significant progress in closing the achievement gap. The Title I Achievement Awards program recognizes and honors three categories of schools. Title I Distinguished Schools, Title I Reward Schools, and National Title I Distinguished Schools. As a Title I Distinguished School, Hill City Elementary performs among the top 5% school-wide programs in the state and has the highest absolute performance for the All Students group based on the current statewide assessment. Hill City Elementary now has the opportunity to apply to become a national Title I Distinguished School. If named as a winner, the school will receive $20,000 and be invited to attend the national conference being held next year in Boston, Massachusetts. Hill City CCRPI score grew from a 70.7 in 2018 to an 88 in 2019. The significant growth is attributed to six key factors. A focus was placed on knowing and understanding the required rigor of the standards at the element level, as well as understanding and using student data. Content mastery in math significantly improved as a result of using personalized learning for students. Personalized learning allows students to focus on improving the skills where they may have deficits. Common grading was initiated through teacher collaboration to ensure grading was aligned to the rigor of the standards. In order to take a grade for an assignment, it must be specifically tied to a standard. This allows an A in one third grade math class to be equal to an A in another third grade math class. Contracted services and all human resources in the building are maximized and used to work with groups of students. For example, camp teachers and paraprofessionals are used to push into other grade levels in classrooms when they have a break in their regular schedules. Participation in professional learning opportunities and working with the academic coach have been instrumental in the school's growth. Teachers take what they learn during professional learning opportunities and apply, those, and apply that knowledge in the classroom. Students are able to have meaningful conversations about their learning goals and more importantly, the academic growth that they make with the adults in the building and their families. In the near future, we will be hosting a school-wide event to present Hill City's Title I Distinguished School official banner. At this time, I would like to invite Hill City Principal Jennifer Halco and all of her staff who are with us this evening to come forward to receive a certificate for their outstanding accomplishment. Congratulations, Hill City families, students, teachers, and staff, as well as our entire community. Ms. Halco.
Staff, I know they have worked very hard. Let's give them one more round of applause. At this time, most of them I have seen have took it upon themselves, but I normally allow. If, if you're more than welcome to stay, but if you're here for recognition, feel free to step out. Either way. Okay. Oh, those teachers have an early start tomorrow, so please don't feel obligated to remain. I'm not taking names. Okay, Dr. Webb, uh, next item on the agenda, superintendent reports. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Delighted that we've got three reports for you tonight. Before we begin, though, so I would like to ask Jill Lipitor, if she would, uh, to introduce our new health services director, uh, who you approved last week. Lipitor. Good evening. Good evening. Last week, you did a great honor and acknowledged the need for a new health services director within Pickens County Schools. I'm sorry, I felt like I was leaning over there. I thank you for it, and I thank you for the support for our children. The health of the children is at most very high, along with the safety of the children. I am honored to introduce to you Mrs. Gail Smith, an RN that we stole from the Children's Health Center of Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you for the honor and privilege to be able to serve in this district. I come to you from Children's Health Care of Atlanta, serving as a consultant for school nurses across the state. 106, excuse me, 1,600 of them. And I've been responsible for revising and publishing the Georgia School Health Resource Manual, which is a 700-page document outlining best practice. And so my passion and my enthusiasm for the work that I do and in partnering with you is, is um, improving, enhancing, and ensuring that kids excel and that they academically and have, um, have academic and lifelong achievement. So I look forward to partnering with you and being that point person for school health matters and for chronic conditions and uh, ensuring that these kids get the, the competent quality care that they deserve and being a support for the parents and these families and uh, being as a resource for you. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to Pickens County. Although you live here, we're welcome to the school system. Um, I call on Chief uh, Financial Officer Amy Smith to present our financial update. Thank you, Dr. Webb. Martha brings up our general fund. Um, I'll draw your attention to the top line as always, our ad valorem taxes. We're at a 90.11% collection, which at this time of the year is very good. Uh, we're very hopeful we'll get closer to that 100%. Of course, I uh, want to remind you that we have to budget the full amount that the calculation from our millage rate uh, produces, <coughs> although 2.5% will be count kept at the county government office uh, to cover their expenses for collecting the taxes. We are still required to budget it as part of our budget, but we know we will not collect that 2.5%. But hopefully, we'll collect some past due revenues and get as close to that 100% collection as possible. Overall, we have collected 66.03% of our budgeted expenditures, expended 44.18% of our budgeted expenses. Don't get too excited. I know we're over halfway through this year, but remember, Come June, we will have three payroll runs that come in that month. So don't get too excited. We are on, on task for this time of year. I've checked each category and we're in good shape at this point. Do y'all have any questions on that report? And uh, <coughs> Martha changes reports for me to the financial report. Our SPLOS revenue for the month of January 2020 was $530,690.59. And yes, I'm enthusiastic because that is the highest monthly collection we have ever had in the life of the SPLOST. So I've been here since 2000, and I went back further than that. It's still the highest monthly collection 
Um, I've asked some questions as to why, and hopefully I'll get an answer from the Department of Revenue, but um, I'll let you know if they do respond. But we're excited about that. Um, interest earned is $657.64 for the month. Uh, we received a donation for the PHS baseball renovation in the amount of $33,333.33. This is one part of three donations we are expecting. We had a refund of a wire transfer fee that was accidentally charged, and our expenditures totaled $1,546,416.42 for the month. Of course, most of those expenses are for our Pickens Junior High School project. Our month-end total SPLOST balance was $1,412,371.89. Our average collection has now risen to $455,132.88, so we are excited to have that collection continuing to increase. One report, um, you, we bring this report to you once every three months. It is a quarterly requirement. And it is the school activity report for all of our school activity accounts. It reflects the beginning balance, the, all the receipts collected for the, that quarter, the disbursements, and the ending balance for each of our schools. Do y'all have any questions? That's all I have, Dr. Webb. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Uh, Assistant Superintendent Tony Young will present the attendance report for the month of January. Right, thank you, Dr. Webb. It's my pleasure to uh, recognize our attendance winners for the month. Start with staff. And you'll notice there last month it was Harmony Elementary. This month it's Harmony Elementary. <laughs> Come on down. That is awesome. Thank you. Two months in a row. Going to go thank for a three P, just like in sports. <laughs> Next, we will recognize our student attendance, and last month's winner was the junior high school, 96.15%. This month, it's going to be Jasper Middle School, 95.62%. Congratulations, Thank you, sir. There you go. And one last report that goes with attendance. I am honored to report tonight that our dropout total sits at 11. For those of you that pay close attention, you'll remember that last month our dropout total was 11. So that means for this past month we had no dropouts. So that is awesome. We're sitting at a total for the year of 11 students, which 11 is 11 too many, but uh, there's a lot of hard work that's going on and a lot being accomplished by those people responsible for helping us with that. So I want to thank those guys. I will at this time move on to operations and construction. If Mr. Gillen would come up and do that report for <coughs> us. Hey. <coughs> Our maintenance report this month is, uh, I just want to brag on the maintenance department this tough time of year. We're always busy, but with this time of year with all the weather and different changes and the temperature and the roads and, and you know, they're out cutting trees out of the road for our buses and everything else. And I just want to commend them. I want to thank them, uh, each and every one at the maintenance department. And they, they do a great job and we're fortunate to have people that are that dedicated. Transportation. Uh, Wow, what a challenge the last three weeks. Uh, we're having training classes right now. We got two drivers in front, two new uh, students and drivers training classes, and we hope to have them on board soon. It'd take about three weeks to complete the entire process. Weather's giving us some challenges, and you know, uh, just like with maintenance, but our buses transport our precious cargo. It's, it's uh, we make some decisions sometimes to not go to school or delay and it's all based on the safety of our children and we don't want one hurt and it's not just the bus it's the students that drive it's, it's dangerous so we, we try to make the best decision we can to get these kids here safely i want to thank our drivers for all the patience the, and the commitment to taking care of our kids and getting them here safely i'm going to give you an example this morning i had flooded roads pitch road old mill white road Evans Road, Cove Road, Jordan Road, and Tilly Road. Trees down on Fortner Road, <coughs> Ridge Road, 
Big Ridge Road in Elk Overlook. Power lines down at Old Mill White Extension and Highway 136 and Teeter Road. Roads washed out at Whitestone Road and 136 and Connors Mill. That was this morning. This road that was washed out was a four to five day process to fix. Uh, the county works well with us and helps us out. They were out cutting trees early this morning for us. It's still difficult when it's dark. You can't, a bus is hard to back up in the dark. If we get into an area where trees or power lines are down, we can't continue. We have to get back out of there. So a lot of times we're running a little late. And this morning we probably were late, but probably had 15 minutes late on one bus and a little bit later on another one. So I commend the transportation department. They, they work hard. They try to get these kids here safe. And if you could listen to the radio in the morning, the chaos, the calls on the phone, the radios from the buses, it's amazing. It just it works so well. You'd be you'd be proud of them. You'd you'd, you'd go by and tell them how proud you are of them. Food service uh, student chefs from JMS will be competing in the junior self competition in Macon on February the twentieth. March is National Nutrition Month. It's a great reminder to all of us that the importance of making informed food choices and developing sound eating and physical activity habits like I do. <laughs> uh, the theme for the National Nutrition Month for 2020 is Eat Right, Bite by Bite. The National School Breakfast Week is coming on March the 2nd through the 6th. This year's theme is school, of school breakfast is School Breakfast Out of the World. We hope to fill the, the breakfast world for students lunch a successful day. Uh, Bass has a new event she wants to talk to you about. It's called Georgia School Breakfast Challenge, and I'm going to ask her to come up and speak on it. She'll do a good job for us on that. Good evening, everybody. Who all ate breakfast this morning? Yeah, very good. So, yes, I wanted to talk about a new breakfast challenge. Um, all principals and superintendents across the state recently, probably back in November, oh, take that one now for now. Hi, Beth. Yeah, thank you. That's a surprise. So, anyway, but principals and superintendents across the state received a letter from um, Superintendent Woods. And um, I want to read an expert from the letter, and this was really a combination of efforts between Superintendent Woods, um, First Lady Marty Kemp, um, lots of other agencies, including Children's Health Care of Atlanta, um, were all involved in this, um, this event to start a breakfast challenge that is a statewide challenge. So, just a small expert from the letter from Dr. Woods. Um, he says, no, ch no child should come to school hung hungry in our state, yet many do. Currently in Georgia, approximately 60% of students who eat school lunch also participate in school breakfast. Um, as a side note, in, in Pickens County, 51.8% of our children that eat lunch also participate in breakfast. So we're a little bit lower than the state average in terms of the number of children participating in breakfast as well. Um, a team of state and local government and nonprofit representatives came together to form the No Kid Hungry Georgia School Breakfast Team. And they're exploring strategies to improve the breakfast participation rate along with overall programs to um, address childhood hunger. So, starting March 2nd, which happens to be the first day of National School Breakfast Week, it's also Dr. Seuss's birthday, so it's a big day, um, the Georgia <coughs> School Breakfast Team um, will start, the, the team that I mentioned, will start the School Breakfast Challenge, um, and they invited any interested school districts to sign up, so I signed up. Um, they said the first 50 would get some prizes. I don't know if I was the first 50, but I did sign up at least within the first hour of when I received notice of it. So um, I signed up all six schools, so I'm asking for forgiveness now from the principals. Um, I did get the blessing from Dr. Webb, so um, at any rate, so what does that mean? Um, basically, what the challenge is going to um, entail is that one school from each Georgia RISA with the highest percentage increase in school breakfast participation through March and April, the period that the contest is going to run, um, will be awarded with prizes. They don't say what those are. They're probably still trying to, to determine that. Um, including statewide publicity, recognition events, and fund rewards for staff and students. Um, also, they are going to look at schools that showcase outstanding engagement with administrators, educators, hint, hint, um, parents, and students will also receive additional prizes and recognition. So this really is a community-wide event. 
Um, and I just want to kind of share, for some of you, uh, you probably feel like I've been talking about breakfast ever since I got here five years ago, but really, um, it's because it's, there's such an opportunity for us to grow our, our participation. Just three years ago, only 20% of the students in Pickens County um, participated in breakfast. As of December 2019, we we're at 38% of students eating um, school breakfast. And that didn't just happen just out of a fluke. We worked really hard. Um, in 2018, we, were, we received a grant from the Atlanta Community Food Bank, and with that grant, we were able to buy mobile breakfast carts, which we implemented at the high school. And the high school's breakfast participation in the last three years has gone from probably 7% of the students up to almost 30% of the students, so that's huge. Um, and at the junior high, the, the middle school, and the high school, um, they also all received a brand new mobile cart this past May, again from another grant. This one was from the uh, Dairy Alliance in, in um, conjunction with the NFL and the Fuel Up to Play 60, so the Atlanta Falcons logos all over the carts. Um, and with those cards, we've been able to reach more children, and um, we were able to at um, the junior high this year with Dr. Flats um, and um, ability to schedule the classes. We have a 10-minute break between first and second period, and we're able to feed between 250 to 350 students every day. And we run that four days a week, and with that, we're averaging um, 250 more students a day this year than last year at breakfast. So it's huge, and I'm very excited about it, and we all know the benefits of breakfast, and whether you eat it from home or eat it at school, or the thing about second chance breakfast is there's so many people that they're not hungry when they get up. My children are that way. Um, I'm not. I'm very hungry when I get up. But, um, but for those who aren't hungry, and then they get to school, they're in a rush, that second chance breakfast gives them another opportunity to get some nutrition and some energy so that they can stay alert and um, do well in school. And um, from the nurse's perspective, um, it's been a very positive thing, especially at the junior high. The number of visits to the clinics because they have a stomachache or a headache because they're hungry has pretty much dwindled down to nothing. So um, for all those reasons, I hope that I have everybody's support as we try to get creative. Um, and we'll kick it off with National School Breakfast Week, but um, just endure me for the next couple of months as I try to get crazy with our staff and do some fun things with the kids for breakfast. Okay? Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thompson and Mr. Gillen and uh, Mr. Young. <coughs> appreciate those reports, and that concludes our report. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Webb. Thank you, staff, for those reports. Section 8 action items. Approval of out-of-state field trips. We have three proposed out-of-state field trips. One exciting is a application to participate in the Cherry Blossom Parade in Washington, D.C. Are you want to go over all this? Yes. I won't uh, steal your thunder. No, it's fine. Uh, the, the Cherry Blossom Parade is only offered, uh, it used to be one per state was accepted to it. Now they take two or three. It's a rolling application. Uh, we've already sent it in. It's not even due until September. We've already got it, got, got it going. Uh, if we are not accepted to it, and, and there's a high chance we will, it's the same company that, that approved us for Philly, and uh, they know about our resume of Philly and Gatlinburg and Chicago parades. Uh, if not, there's, there's, we, we played at the World War II Memorial last time. There's literally hundreds of places to play. Um, so this trip would be in spring break of 2021. And um, of course, just like the, the Philly trip and, and the Chicago and Gatlinburg, we want to get as many kids going as possible. Uh, we'll be doing some fundraising to, uh, that can help the students pad their individual accounts if they need to. Um, so that's, that's what we're asking for approval for. Are you going to go ahead? You can go ahead with the other two trips. Okay, the other two trips. Uh, Out-of-state competition for Winter Guard. Uh, we have uh, all of their competitions are in-state except the one in Ch uh, Chattanooga. And this is the final one. It's the uh, Southern Association of Performing Arts. Uh, this is right over the border uh, in Chattanooga at UTC Coliseum. And uh, it is the final event of the year. We've been to it every year, but it is over the, over the state line, so we have to approve that as well. Uh, the final one is uh, summer camp. We, uh, every year we send our drum majors to a summer camp so that uh, either the, the single drum major can learn on her, uh, his or her own, or this year we have two drum majors, so they'll be going uh, together. Uh, one of them, uh, Paige, is going to be out of, out of state on the Greece trip with Travel Club, and that knocks out two other camps that we we're intending, intending to go to. The Music for All Summer Symposium at Ball State University is a huge summer camp. They actually have 10 or 12 different tracks for all the marching arts and concert band and directors and instructors. 
I went two years ago, and our color garden instructor went with me two years ago as well. Uh, and we, I did the director track, she did the color garden instructor track. This year we figured let's go in up there and bring our drum majors with us. Um, I've already spoken with both parents, uh, Stacy Jens and, um, and Paige Klein's family, uh, Todd, Todd and Kelly Klein. Both were like, heck yeah, we're going to go on vacation without them. So they're excited about not having their kids for a week. And they're, we're driving up and they'll just drive up with us is, is what they, they requested me. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Rube? None being, do I hear a motion to approve all three out-of-state field trips? I'm out of motion. Motion by Ms. Ennis, do I hear a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Finley, any further discussion? All in favor? Five and none opposed. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Action item B, approval of dual enrollment high school program participation agreement. Dr. Webb, do you have anything on that? <coughs> No, except I want to say that the number of uh, Pickens County students participating in dual enrollment uh, has steadily increased uh, since 2014. Um, we've got students who are participating not only in academic classes, but in technical <coughs> classes as well. Um, we've got uh, uh, not only a, a large number of our students taking those courses, but uh, there's a 96% pass rate going on there so they're doing quite well representing us well so based on all the success that the Pickens County students are achieving through the dual enrollment program I recommend approval of the dual enrollment program participation agreement thank you very much to hear a motion to approve the dual enrollment high school program participation agreement I make that motion motion by Miss Youngblood to hear a second second, second by Miss Anis any further discussion all in favor? Five and none opposed. Thank you. Item C, approval of surplus. We have uh, two proposals for surplus items, one from Harmony Elementary and the other from the junior high school. You've all been able to look through all that. It's uh, outdated curriculum items, uh, books and things of that nature. Do I hear a motion to approve the surplus as presented? I'll make that motion. Motion by Ms. Enos to hear a second. Take by Mr. Smith. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five and unopposed. Surplus is approved. Item D, approval of minutes. We have uh, approval of minutes for call meeting on January 6th and 9th, the regular meeting on the 9th, and the call meeting for our work session on February 7th. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Motion by Ms. Finley to her a second. I second. Second by Ms. Youngblood. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five and none opposed. Thank you. Item E, approval of personnel. We have two personnel action reports. The first personnel action report uh, as amended. I hear a motion to approve. Mr. Chair, oh, I'm a matter of point of order here. Uh, I'll recommend that uh, PAR is uh, revised and uh, amended be approved. Thanks, sir. First PAR is revised and amended. Do I hear a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Smith. Do I hear a second? I second that. Second by Ms. Youngblood. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five and none opposed. And PAR 2 is added. I recommend approval. PAR, the second PAR added. Do I hear a motion to approve that? Motion by Mr. Smith. We're here a second. I'll second. Second by Ms. Finley. All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstain? Four in favor, one abstain. And that's all our action items. That brings us down to <coughs> section, uh, excuse me, section nine board comments. Any board comments? Mr. Chair, I need to again. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's my fault. But, uh, action item F. I, Really As a matter of just uh, moving forward, I, I recommend to not make up the school closing due to inclement weather on February 11th, and I allow employees not able to attend work that day to be provided opportunities by their principals and staff leaders during the second semester to make up the day for pay purposes. Pending your approval of the optional work days on May 27th, 28th, following post planning, uh, those are added uh, for those who are unable to make up the uh, days prior to that time. Thank you. Thank you for that. 
based on that recommendation, do I hear a motion to approve it based on the inclement weather day? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Smith to hear a second. I second. Same by Ms. Shumblow. Any discussion? All in favor? Five and unopposed, thank you. My apologies on that. I looked over that. Well, one comment too. Um, I think a couple of weeks ago with the snow date, I looked like a genius. And then with the rain date, I probably looked like an idiot. But both weeks, I think the students would vote me as the superintendent of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the parents. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Well, uh, Section 9, board comments. Any board comments? I'd like to say something. Ms. Finley? Um, I'd like to thank, first of all, the, the team that makes that decision to close the schools. I and mean, even when it looks like maybe we could have squeezed another school day out, I know that those decisions are made with the students' best interest in, in mind. And I appreciate that so much. And a special thank you to Mr. Gilliland and the bus drivers and maintenance people. Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't want to be a bus driver for anything. I'm so thankful for them. They do a fantastic job. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Finley. Any other comments? None being, the next item on the agenda, public participation. We have one request for public participation. As a standard, I will read the uh, public participation uh, policy as implemented in 1994 by the Board of Education. To be placed on the agenda, a citizen must request to appear before the Board in writing at least five days prior to the regular monthly meeting of the Board. The request must state clearly the topic or issue to be addressed. Each citizen whose name is placed on the agenda will be given five minutes to make their comments, but the total time allotted to citizen participation will be limited to 20 minutes. Citizens may reduce additional, con may reduce additional concerns to writing and submit to the Board of Education if five minutes does not provide sufficient time. Where several citizens wish to address the same topic or issue, the Board reserves the right to further limit discussions should they become repetitive. While citizens may use their allotted time to take serious issue with board decisions, the board will not permit anyone to become personally abusive of individual board members or board employees. When issues arise that stimulate high community interest, the board may schedule special meetings specifically to invite public comment. In those circumstances, the board will establish special guidelines for participation. The board will not respond to comments or questions posed by citizens in their presentations, but will take those comments and questions under advisement. Uh, Cheryl Sams is the only request for public participation. Good evening. While this is not a question and answer session, that does not relieve you of your responsibility to answer the questions presented. None of the questions that were asked at the last meeting have been addressed. I find no evidence of any action taken to remove Dr. Wilson from bank accounts, no motions or public votes on the issue. This issue is not qualified for an executive session. Next, we're going to talk about requirements to qualify to be a board member. I have here, this is from the Pickens County Board of Education. Uh, you wrote it. Item 5A states that you must not be employed by or serving on the governing board of any private educational body or institution. Now, some may say that the board, the Mount Ed is, is not private, but it's still intertwined with Pickens County. Uh, both Donna Ennis and Ms. Youngblood are employed by Mountain Education. Uh, and it looks, and we look at what the ethics in government states about this. Conflict of interest may be defined as any situation where the personnel interest, personal interest of a public official in a matter before them may prevent or even appear to prevent them from making an unbiased decision with respect to the matter. The trust that is so important to an effective relationship between a public official and the public they serve depends on avoidance of the mere appearance of impropriety as well. Now, Ms. Youngblood is not just an employee, she is principal of the uh, Mount Ed, which puts her in a supervisory position over Ms. Enos. And since the BOE superintendent serves on the local board for the Mountain Education Charter <coughs> Center, which puts 
any superintendent, Dr. Wilson or any other, in a supervisory position over Ms. Youngblood and Ms. Ennis sounds like a conflict of interest to me. I see a possible issue, purely hypothetical, as a Board of Education member, Ms. Ennis and Ms. Youngblood are supervisors over Dr. Wilson in his position as superintendent, evident in their demand for his resignation. So let's say Ms. Youngblood and Ms. Ennis disagree with Dr. Wilson or any superintendent as a board member of their employer, Mountain Ed, that's okay. They can, they can get rid of him. And then that takes him off as being one of their supervisors. That, that's a conflict of interest for them to be able to fire him and that takes him off the board that supervises them. That, that's just conflict of interest. And the Pickens County Board of Education owns the building which Mountain Education is utilizing. Pickens Board of Education can regulate the conditions of that usage agreement. Teachers who work there or in the county cannot speak out for fear of losing their jobs. Case in point, one retired teacher reached, and reached out to me and spoke of an incident at when uh, Ms. Youngblood was principal at Herm, uh, Hill City Elementary. And she said there was a kerfuffle Buffalo among the staff, I was called into her office to give my opinion referencing Dr. Carlton uh, Wilson's handling of the situation. I answered probing questions for a bit, then ended it by saying that it all should just end. And I was not, I was uncomfortable speaking behind Ms. Dr. Wilson's uh, back. Um, And that retired teacher is present tonight. Now, Mr. Green and Ms. Enos and Ms. Youngblood, prove me wrong and I will, I will publicly apologize. I'll put an ad in the paper, but I still think this is a ethics violation. And this does not come from me only, okay? People in the community as well have reached out to me. Look at social media. Look to the letters to the editor. People approach me at ball games, Ingalls, Home Depot, teachers who must not speak publicly to protect their jobs. I received an anonymous call concerning Mr. Green um, that there was visits by Mr. Green to Mount Ned, so I posed this question to Mr. Green. Mr. Green, is this where you met with Ms. Ennis and Ms. Youngblood to work out the details of the resignation for Mr. Wilson? Um, I'm just asking the question. Prove me wrong. Now, I took um, two board members knew nothing of these worked out details and when I requested security tapes from the main office of Mountain Education Charter Center, I was quoted... Five minutes has expired. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's five hours. That's just five hours. That says five hours. <laughs> it was counting back from five hours well, to 4.55 which would be five minutes. Your time has expired, ma'am. Well, one thing I want you to know is if they were going to charge me $92,400 for edited video. Next item on the agenda, adjournment. I hear a motion to adjourn. Motion by Ms. Youngblood to hear a second. Thank by Ms. Enos. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five and none opposed. We are adjourned at 6.59 p.m. Thank you all for being here tonight.